So, um, my name is Anton Wally. I'm uh, number nine on GitHub and IRC. Uh, I'm not touting or selling anything, so I'm just going to dive straight into the slides. <laughs> So this isn't really a talk about uh, native modules. What I'm doing is I'm framing conversation around native modules really to sort of bring to the front, we need to talk more about when things break. There's a perception, certainly that's coming to the fore again, about this times 10 programmer type philosophy and people who are either the best or the worst at what we do. Uh, I think that's, that's a disease that we just really need to cut out. So I loved what Paul was doing there earlier on, like get your hands up and say stuff breaks and be honest about what you do. So the reason sort of, I don't know my, uh, the reason, the thing that gave me the thought about that was this guy who's on the screen here. Uh, does anybody know who he is? He's not a computer guy. He's uh, Henry Mailson, okay? So in the 1950s, Henry Mailson, um, he suffered from uh, epilepsy. And the cure for the epilepsy by the doctors at the time was to completely remove his, his hypoclampus. So the outcome of that was fortunately that he no longer had epilepsy. The unfortunate side of that was he couldn't remember anything anymore. But it gave him the, the honor, if you want to call it that, of um, being the most stu studied person in psychology. So most of the papers, most of the things we now understand about the brain are due to this guy here. Um, and there's some interesting things that sort of happen. So even though he couldn't remember anything, the, the uh, image on the right-hand side there is a little puzzle that they set for him. And it's a motor puzzle where it's a trick of mirrors. So you, the problem is to trace the outline of the star. But when you're actually in, in front of the box, if you move right, then you actually move left and vice versa. So even though he couldn't remember anything, his motor system actually did remember, which I find absolutely astounding. So he remembered, but he couldn't remember remembering. But like I say, the reason why I wanted to bring him up today is it's when things break that we really understand what is happening. Sorry? Oh, is it, yeah? OK, so what's the specific thing that I'm uh, going to talk about today? So I think Julian mentioned earlier on uh, Level DB. So are we all familiar with Level DB now? Yeah. Raise your hands. Who wasn't listening to Julian? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, you listen to me as well. So yeah, so basically uh, Level DB is uh, in memory uh, database uh, for Node.js that we're finding interesting because it allows us to do a new model of database design, which is comp uh, compositional databases, sort of adding features as you want, as opposed to being given a monolithic uh, instance of a database that's owned by some company somewhere and all those sort of historical reasons about it, okay? But it's not really that important about what level DB is. What was interesting here is we had um, this issue that was raised about three months ago, and it was a memory leak in batch. So being, obviously, whoever logged this book, I've yeah, always listened to you and said, I don't know what it is, it must be a memory leak. Always expect memory leaks. So he's, this, I've put bullet points here, but this is really the, all the text that was sort of left in, um, in the initial bug report. When he's setting the thousands of batch files with batch, db batch, the memory allocation of the parent app shoots up alarmingly and does not come down again. This issue has appeared in the last few weeks. Anyways, to manually free up memory or otherwise, force, is there any way to force garbage collection? OK, I've got two problems with this. The first one is the fact that there's no way to reproduce it. So what do we do to try and resolve this for you? That's a pretty simple one. The other one is, despite what you say, I, I'm not that convinced about trying to um, pre-diagnose any, any problems without actually having any, any evidence to back it up. Um, I think it's right to sort of be aware of problems like memory issues and expect to have them and know how to deal with them, but I don't think pre sort of guessing what it might be is a good way to go about sort of trying to resolve your issues. Try and work through things sort of methodically if you can. Okay, so we got, we got back onto him, uh, which was fantastic, and he gave us a test case. 
So, uh, now. So, can, can anybody read that? Does anybody need that any bigger? A little bit bigger? We okay? Right, so what this is basically doing is it's, LevelDB has this notion of, uh, sorry, level up, which uh, has this notion of batching, which is you can put lots of commands, puts, uh, deletes, um, it, it, into the level up instance and then apply them as a single atomic batch. So that's what he's doing here. And in order to sort of fill that out, he's, um, he's using Laura Nipsom. And basically, creating a batch and then putting things into the batch and then applying it. So that's a, I mean, that seems like a fairly sort of narrow instance of, or uh, uh, yeah, implementation of what he thinks the problem is. So the first thing I did, we sort of, Paul mentioned earlier on using Dtrace. So the first thing I did was have a look at it in Dtrace. So. So it was very, very simple dtrace script to sort of understand what was happening or try and get an overview of what was happening in, uh, in the application when that ran. So this dtrace script is profile, it's not particularly clear because it's dark red, but it's profile 97. 97 is the hertz, so it's just under 100, so it's slightly offset, so you don't get any uh, counters or any sort of rec <coughs> recurring instances on the 100. And it's going to profile all the node instances in this time. Uh, in this case, we're profiling uh, just the one application that's running. So you can do that by PID as well if you want, but we didn't. And the J stack is the depth of the stack that you want to trace. It's 150 frames. And the 88,000 is the buffer size. And uh, there's a count of those things. And then we're doing this for 600 seconds. And then when we exit, we exit it out, okay? So I'm not going to make you sit here for six minutes while that runs. So I'll pull this back up again, and we'll have a look at the output from that. So I was really happy when I saw this, because my preconception of reading what the, uh, the original post was, that it's potential memory leak, sort of this starts to point towards it. So what we're seeing is, if we can blow that up a bit, well, we don't need to suppose, blow it up at this stage, but there's, you've, you've seen a lot of, a lot of uh, samples that are coming through in the red, and the, the stuff in the red is actually in, uh, in JavaScript world, and the stuff on the, um, on the far left-hand side, the pink stuff, this is all yet level DB down here. So comparatively speaking, it looks like a JavaScript problem. Fantastic. But then we actually looked at these stacks here. And if you look at the one at the top there, it's a, sorry, I can't see my screen here, so I'm gonna wander over here and let's just find out what it says. Yeah, so basically what's happened is, it's the Lauren Ipsum call that seems to be taking quite a lot of time. And over this six minute sample, we also see that we're calling require a lot. And there's another call into the require module here. Uh, that's not right. So if, you shouldn't be seeing require calls because it requires a, um, a sync call, and that means you basically, you're blocking. So although we thought this test was actually quite small and reasonably compact, it actually isn't. And if we look at what that looks like in code, that problem. So. so rather than sort of blow up the whole code for the law and ipsum, basically this is what, this is what a synopsis of what's going on. So you have a module exports, and within that module exports, there's an internal require. And then if we pretend that there's uh, what we've done, the stuff below the blue line, so below the comment, is the implementation that we have in the code. So we're repeatedly calling require synchronously. So I mean, that's, that's the type of thing that Dtrace really does sort of bring to the fore. It allows you to see where you're, ex where you're executing most of the time, and does that look right compared to what you expect to see? So I, it really is useful for that. So we, of course, took that out, as, as you do. Uh,
So we took that out and basically replaced, um, replaced that with crypto, um, which we sort of, we, it is well known, well bound. And we use crypto to generate the random bytes as Ipsum uh, Lorem was. So I'm still hoping for the same shape of graph where it's still a user land problem, but I just want to get, uh, I want to get the Ipsum Lorem out of the way. So, I rerun it again, the same parameters, and of course it doesn't do what I want it to do. What you see here is basically you've got the, the full process running along the bottom, and you've got the same amount of time that's running in user land as you are running in the native component on the left hand side. So all these calls here are all uh, calls to the level DB module, and all these are basically the call to batch and then the underlying processes, the underlying uh, calls that get you all the way to the, the no process. So that's not what I wanted. So we still have this memory leak, or we still have this problem with memory expansion uh, and it not calming down. So. What I was thinking it might be was, so I had a proposition and I, oh, how do I test this out? Could it be that garbage collection is getting involved with the compaction of level DB? So level DB, uh, to give you a metaphor, basically what happens is it's like a library. So you put books on the, you, somebody comes in, they put books on the table and then the different levels would be shelves behind me. And every now and again, I have to pick up the books from the table and put them into the shelf and that, that picking up of the books and putting them onto the shelf is what's called compaction. And that takes certain time when you're inputting a lot of data. And um, I thought it was worth testing out that, um, that garbage collection should be, could be getting in the way of compaction. So back to Dtrace again. Um, let's have a look at how that can help me out. So... So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pump this up a little bit here. So this is a uh, detail script that allows, that basically does that comparison between, um, between the compaction times and the garbage collection times. So quite simply, all I'm doing is when, G, when garbage collection starts in Node, uh, just log it as a timestamp. When it's done, log it as a timestamp. And then the jiggery pokery underneath were, is the names of the... Um, of the actual method calls within the, uh, within the level DB library. And I found those particularly sort of uncomfortable. I mean, ZN level DB 60B impl 20 background compaction, no, no. So I made a script, an awk script, that basically there's a command, uh, there's a command on Unix systems called NM which will basically do that translation for you. And this is an awk script that basically runs a, um, uh, runs a, uh, yeah, runs, runs a command to get the, um, get the method calls as sort of in that native format, the format that we want them to, to get them in, and then in the format that um, would possibly make more sense to us. So we can do things like, um, uh, And if we're at a little bit of resolution, we can get sort of all the gets in there. And then we can sort of filter down and it will tell us, we can see the ZN1 there. And then underneath, we can see the equivalent actual method call in, uh, in the native component. So we, didn't, we don't have to put any sort of probes or any additional code into the library in order to find that out. Sort of this is what sort of dtrace gives you. This is why it's called dynamic tracing. So you can look at your source code, understand the entry points where you think there's going to be pain, and, um, and then instrument those points, okay? So that's, that was those. So we have a script that ex exports, um, that basically gives us the timings of when the compaction starts, the compaction ends, and when, the, um, uh, when GC starts and when GC stops. Uh, 
yeah. So actually, yeah, that's a table format. So this is in GitHub, but um, you can see basically that's what it's printing out to file there. And of course, this is what it looks like plotted. So my, again, the, the idea that I had about um, garbage collection interfering with compaction was completely wrong. The compaction's happening at the bottom, and I'm getting the, the bars that you can see is a hell of a lot more garbage collection than that, but the bars that you can see just above the, uh, the main thick black bar are all the main sort of garbage collection instances. Basically, they're taking around 200 milliseconds, and uh, the compaction's taken, I think the worst one there is about 10 seconds. But it, it, it doesn't sort of account for, well, it, well, it's taking time, it doesn't account for this sort of complete stopping of the system, systems not working anymore. So I got sort of lost at that point. Um, this was about uh, six weeks ago, and we'd no, um, we'd, we'd no sort of idea of where to take it next. The plan was to actually talk to some of the guys who, are, um, who write the, the native no components, see if they could throw any light onto why this would be happening. So in the meanwhile, what I did was I wanted to see what the performance of level DB should be without any Node.js. So what I did was I took a leaf from uh, one of the talks this morning, and I built a level DB implementation with libuv completely native. And I called it loved, loved by. <laughs> so it's, I'm not going to go through sort of all the code in here, but it's, if, if you do sort of what wasn't mentioned this morning when you were talking about hacking around and understanding what level D, uh, sorry, libuv is, there's a fantastic talk by Ryan Dahl on Vimeo where he does a full hour's introduction on to, uh, into libuv and it starts right at the very start with, um, this is how you put together a make file, and this is how you include it into your C program, and this is how you basically build up a very simple sort of web server. And I would strongly recommend that you, you take that for a drive. So again, there's, there's nothing sort of super amazing in here other than it's networked. So they, I'm using the network implementation and a new connection. I'm reading whatever comes in on the connection, and I'm just setting up my uh, just setting up the loop there, the, the uh, libuv event loop, and just do do do. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, so within that loop. I'm uh, basically just doing a DB put. So this isn't by any means a full sort of uh, level DB uh, libuv implementation. It's just, I just wanted to see sort of what are the characteristics of level DB outside of the Node.js space. So again, so sort of when I'm attacking this problem, I've still got, I've still got two things in my, in my world. I've got the V8 engine and I've got level DB and I'm trying to sort of understand which one is underperforming or which one's doing what, okay? So we can see that in, uh, in action, I think. Uh, so that sets up a server. No, I may not be able to see the screen here. Uh, right, yeah. So, so as we can see, basically this is a, I'll show the code afterwards, but this is a very simple client that connects to, will you be quiet? That connects to, uh, connects to the server and does a, literally a million puts in is it, yeah, is it 10,000 puts or something like that? But it sort of replicates what that other, um, 
Well, the test case was that we had, but without having any sort of node, uh, node instance in there. So it's not sort of an underlying problem with uh, level DB. Uh, the compilation me methodology is just some unknowns, and it's the first time I'd actually seen level D DB work outside of Node. So it was interesting to see that, yeah, that's the sort of performance that we, we can expect. So, yeah. So, that really sort of, that really sort of left me there, and I sort of went off at this point on a tangent. So I think if we look into main.cpp, I actually didn't mind writing the C code, but what was really nasty was sort of understanding all these includes, and it seemed to me when you've been writing Node for, for so long that the actual API for libuv is sort of turned inside out. And what happened a couple of weeks ago was Substack, um, Substack came out with a module import pattern for, um, uh, for using a module-based approach for C programs. So I've only got five minutes left. So I, just, I do want to give you a quick sort of show on what that sort of looks like. Okay. So what, what he came out with was is a way to require um, C, C code within C. So it's an infrastructure that allows you to do module-based programming in C, which is something that's been discussed before, but it's the first time that uh, I'd, I've seen anything like it sort of implemented. And it was sort of good to me now because I was starting to think about using, uh, potentially using libuv and leveldb together and didn't want to just build another monolithic application. So the only, the only really secret source in here is this require, and the fact that you can obviously give it a name, so you can give it meaning within your instance of how you're using that code as well. And what that's doing is it's basically a preprocessor that generates, um, that, that converts this code, namespaces it to protect it from, uh, from other applications, and then provides a build environment for you, okay? So it's still it's 3.2 version, so .c, and it's npm install .c uh, slash g, and so I can go. But uh, what is it now? Color? No, nope, can't there. And one of the things that I'm still, there's still certain options that you have to pass in. And I think if this is going to sort of get on to the sort of being any way sort of useful, it's the, the management of these options compared to what you, to the modules you're using are going to have to be managed. So I'm working on something where you can sort of require in libuv, but right now it's very, very problematic. The compile string, you might as well be compiling C or you might as well have a make file. So I, I'm, I'm going to give that a uh, continue to look at that. Uh, mm -mm. Uh, and there you go. So. Ah, mm. oh, it's plus plus. Okay, so I have a, in node modules, uh, I have colors.c, and that has been required into this code, and if I do a dot slash a dot out, it basically does a generic print, hello, colorful world, and that's a very sort of simple module system that we're starting to work on in the C environment. So I'm probably running over now, but I just finish up one minute, yeah? okay? So I'll just finish off with what I started with, which was sort of what happened. What happened after I went on this voyage of getting into sea land and compiling all this stuff and having a bit of a journey. 
So it turned out that we should have read the original problem statement properly. So this problem has been opened on, uh, on the level up issue list for three months now. And like I said, these were the original points. When inserting thousands of batch files with DB batch, we had that problem. Uh, when, <laughs> any waste in manual field memory, we had a look and deep dive into that. And really what we should have done was read the second point, which is this issue has appeared in the last few weeks. So three days ago, Max Hogden did a uh, regression um, uh, a test on previous versions. And it turns out that the problem doesn't exist in 0 0.11. And this problem was actually introduced with uh, an upgrade that we did to the native bindings. There's a native binding out there called NAN that Rod Vag has been writing. And we're, um, we're trying to include it into, uh, into this program to abstract ourselves away from sort of the different node, uh, the node native uh, implementations. And that was a little bit embarrassing. Well, not embarrassing, but it's good and it just shows that we're all human, really, you know. And on that, I will wrap up. Okay? Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>